Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HBC. We're here at the PASC 18 conference in Basel, Switzerland. And today I'm here with David Bader from Georgia Tech. David, you're giving a keynote tonight about big data analytics and graph in the real world. Can you tell us more about that? Sure, Rich, and I love Inside HPC. Coming to this meeting is fantastic because we see folks in scientific computing and also big data. And my talk tonight really resonates on those themes here at PASC 18. I came all the way from Atlanta at Georgia Tech with the Rambling Rex here to Basel, Switzerland. And I'll talk about applications ranging from healthcare. You know, as we get older, we have to worry about a lot more, exactly, and looking at finance, and looking at internet of things, self-driving cars, how do we put all of that information and relationships together to make important decisions? So David, I'm, I'm curious about uh, hardware. I'm a hardware guy, right? In terms of computer architectures, what's holding you guys back from the kind of computation you want to do on this big data? Rich, that's a great question. Right now, what holds us back is the power spent moving data around. In new architectures, what we're looking at is moving the computation to the data in new memory subsystems. For instance, in the DARPA High program, we're a software performer and we're working with companies like Intel and Qualcomm to create a new Hive graph processing chip. In that chip, lightweight threads will move around the system to where the data sits and be able to operate more efficiently on these types of challenging problems. Okay, can you give me one example of the real world kind of stuff that people would kind of get their handle on this? Sure, that's a, a great question. <laughs> In the real world, we care about, for instance, our health and we have a lot of electronic patient records, our health records, what I'd like to be able to do is sift through those very fast, of course, with hospitals and medical doctors to understand preventative medicine and predictive medicine. And that way our health can be improved by understanding the rich history that exists. So is this really about finding outliers or predicting the future? It is, so what we'd like to be able to do is not just take big data and do forensic history as to what happened in the past, but use that in a streaming sense to be able to predict the future and to make decisions rapidly on the fly that gives us a healthier and safer future.